Greetings, friend, entrepreneur, and fellow business builder. I'm marketing master Jim Ackerman, and welcome to Biz Kaboom, YouTube's program for small business marketing. Coming up on today's program, Ken Krogh, founder, president, and chief strategist for InsideSales.com will be here. I'll tell you, this guy's done some incredible things, and not only will be talking to him about inside sales, but also about how you can take your small business and make it bigger, faster. Also on today's show, you thought it would be Amazon or Google or at least Walmart, but it turns out it's an independent jeweler that has delivered the first product by drone. We'll have his story. Kent Whipple will also be here uh, as our guest on today's program. Uh, our goal is to bring you people who have actually done it and Kent has in the plumbing business, having built a one truck operation into a booming business generating over a million dollars a month in sales. And he's gonna talk about how he does it and lessons you can learn. And if you wanna make your marketing more effective, I'll be sharing one of the most important principles you can employ whether you're marketing online or off, old media or new, as we talk about headlines and how to make yours irresistible. All this and more, so let's get started helping you get more customers who will pay you more money more often, the fastest, easiest, most cost-effective ways possible, right here on Biz Kaboom Small Business Marketing. Well, welcome to Biz Kaboom, and, and this is our premiere episode, and we're very fortunate today to have one of the top business minds in the nation, perhaps in the world. And our, and our first guest, I just can't tell you how honored I am to have him here. His name is Ken Krogh. He is the president and chief strategist for InsideSales.com, but that's just the tip of the iceberg. This man has started several businesses. He knows how to start one, but more importantly, he knows how to grow it and grow it quickly. I'd like to introduce you to Ken Crow. Come on in, Ken. Thanks, Jim. Appreciate the pleasure to have you here. Have a seat. Have a seat. So, Ken, what I want to talk about today is the entrepreneurial mindset a little bit, uh -huh. and and the attitudinal approach to uh, a business, specifically from the marketing perspective, and the recognition that marketing is the engine that drives every enterprise. But before we get to that, give us a real brief rundown of your background and, and how you got to where you are today. Sure. Now, I'm, I'm an interesting hybrid. I came up through technology and sales and then switched over to marketing, mm -hmm. and the two go well together. And, and so I, I've learned there's a, a few key plays, a few key core principles that I now apply in every situation. I've written about them out on Forbes. I, I talk about them a lot. And those are the basic skill sets that I that I use, and they, they really have some power. So you got a set of plays. You're going to tell uh, tell us what sure. they are. Yeah, yeah. There's some. Uh, I, I've got some fun names for them. The, the first and the most important is divert a river, don't dig a well. Mm. And and what Explain I do with that. that? Yeah, I've learned that it's much much easier to find a river of existing traffic and need than to create it. So the, the name of our business, for example, I told Dave Elkington, my business partner in the early days, I said the best name we could possibly get with the technology that we're offering is the name of, the, of what could become a category, inside sales. And the reason it's worth millions is because it's a keyword. Mm -hmm. And it's a category. And I told Dave, I said, look, right now inside sales is a second-rate department in a company that gets all the crumbs off the table. Right. But the growth trend is going crazy. And I look, went out on Google Trends and I noticed that Inside Sales was just uh, as a name and as a, as a concept. Um, so I said, our best strategy would be to take that river of existing trend and growth and put an industry around it. Now, at the time, it was full of great professionals, um, but we were all the, you know, uh, battling with the existing traditional sales model. Mm -hmm. So. We bought the name the very first day we turned it up on the 7th or 8th of January 2005, we got eight leads. And I'm thinking, how did that happen? But I went out to Google and I typed in inside sales and there were 40,000 companies hiring people and not a single competitor, not a single ad, nothing. It was blue ocean. And so I realized all we've really got to do is 
is help make this an industry from what was a profession. And we then would ride the wave. So that's what we did, and, and that, that wave was pretty profound. And so the, the key principle here is river versus well. Yeah, go to Google Keyword Planner Tool. Mm -hmm. It's the single most powerful tool you can use to find the rivers, and then go, go to Google Insights and see what are trending up. Don't write the ones trending down. Nope, right. nope to self. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> okay, so, so if you're going to start a company, that's a brilliant insight. Can you apply that principle to a local retailer, uh, a, a jeweler, or uh, uh, perhaps a local service company like a carpet cleaner? Sure. Yeah, so, so know what people search on. You know, regional and local search is the new way. Um, so what have you called your company? What benefits do you offer? If you go to Google, would that find you or find your competitors? Because those are rivers of traffic that are free. Mm -hmm. I, provide, I try and provide huge value, which like is exactly what you do. Mm -hmm. Give them huge value. I give away my value, and it comes back tenfold. So that's the concept that, that you can apply in any business. So, and that, that is brilliant. And we're so fortunate today, we have these kinds of tools yes. to be able to search uh, and, and let the public tell us what they're looking for and then give it to them. Absolutely. Pretty, pretty simple. Absolutely. And that's then deliver the value. Yeah. Right. And the value is the key. Um, a lot of my competitors, what they'll do is they'll get up and they'll do a sales pitch on stage and people are sick and tired of sales pitches. What they really want is value they can apply in their business. Mm -hmm. And I get up there and I say, no, here's, here's the value in here. And, and it's after, after uh, we've had the speaking gig, my trade show booth will be full and theirs will be empty. Right. So that's probably the other big rule is people are just sick of being sold to and sick of being marketed to. And the whole trend of, of social and digital media today is, is authenticity. It's being real. It's, 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 it's sharing truth that they can apply, and they'll know how to find you. Yeah. They know how to track you down and get your help, and the ones who can't do it on their own need your help. And mm -hmm. the ones that can do it on their own don't need you anyway. They just want to, you know? And so um, that, that, that's how it's worked for us. It's been pretty powerful. Terrific. A couple other principles uh, in that basic yeah, well, key playbook. The, the second one is similar to the first, but it's swim with the sharks. And it's not the same concept. Well, some it is, but a shark is a big brand. Mm -hmm. It's a person, it's Steve Jobs, or it's Apple. Mm -hmm. And um, it's the reason why we put big logos on our website, all of us, is so we can draft off the wake the big brands have already left. But there's two kinds of fish that swim with a shark. There's that little remora fish with the sucker on the back of its head right. that attaches itself and the shark hates it and tries to scrape it off and kill it. It's a parasite. Mm -hmm. It gives nothing back to the host. Right. Then there's the pilot fish that swims by the mouth of the shark and cleans its teeth, teeth and eats the right. parasites, mm -hmm. and, and, and the shark never eats it because it's symbiotic. Mm -hmm. So the key is to always give back to the host while you're swimming with that shark, and they look at it as a benefit. And I mean, we start off, we were a little minnow, and then we were a salmon, and then we were a shark ourselves. And, and that's the concept. And, and now we swim with the likes of Salesforce and Microsoft and, but we always give back. When I, when I do a trade show for, at, at Salesforce, I bring in thousands of people to the show they wouldn't have come on their own. Right. So I give back. And, and that's the concept, swim with the sharks. The third one is a lot of fun. It's stir the pot. Ah. Add a little bit of controversy, add a little bit of edginess. Um, zig when the others zag. zag. Sure. Uh, I wrote an article for Forbes called The Death of SEO about I love three it. years ago. And it ticked off the whole industry. It was number one on Forbes for an entire week, almost 600 comments. And I told them, I said, look, Google is smarter than you. If you're on the black hat or even white hat side of gaming the system, writing content so that you can get backlinks to your stuff, what Google really wants is great content. Instead of writing all this fake content, just write good great content, content. Sure. You know, and they'll find mm -hmm. you. Yeah. And, and, and that just ticked off so many people. And, and I had the people in PR and social media 
you know, cheering and the people in SEO telling me I'm an idiot. And I, you know, well, two years later, after Penguin and Panda came out and shut shut them down, we've talked about they this. learned about yeah, it. Yeah, we've <laughs> talked about this. The idea. Really, and the whole SEO thing is a is a topic we could spend Absolutely. an entire interview yeah. on. But but the truth of the matter is, I think you're exactly right. Provide good content, and then you know take a good hard look at your pay per click yeah. model instead. Yeah. Because uh, because the SEO model has really become the yellow pages of the old days. Yes. In that uh, you yes. keep having to feed that. Uh, yep. Well, and, and what I what I love to see is is someone who redefines what they sell to change the value. I'm I'm, I'm given the idea of of the carpet cleaning business. Mm -hmm. Everyone else sells carpet cleaning by the square foot, and a, a, a different group decides to say, well, we have a high temperature steam that kills germs, right, and makes it a health issue. The idea of the unique purchase appeal and positioning. Slightly yeah. different from the competition. Boy, there can't be anything more important to the success of any business than to have a position in the marketplace that is not competed with. Absolutely. Okay. What one piece of advice would you give the small business person out there today, whether they've been in business for a long time or they're just getting in, relative to the marketing of their enterprise that you believe would be most valuable to helping them grow their business quickly? online marketing and um, there's a tremendous article out there I've written about it and and the number one believe it or not of all the different marketing media was blogging mm -hmm. and two was search and so on there's like 15 different media but I, that just intrigued me to know him because that's how I got my start was blogging I thought you know I wrote my little blog KenKrog.com and went to number one in the world and Forbes picked me up and I, and I asked myself why was that and here was I think the reason don't think the word blog, think magazine or newspaper. It's the new version of your own media. And what you're doing with this YouTube channel, it's your own television station. That's right. I mean, cut out the middleman and, and go direct. Get some help from really good experts who can accelerate getting it going. And then tell your own story. Yeah. You know, be your own expert. And that, I think, is the key, is uh, Google, as of 2012, now has more ad revenue than all magazines or all newspapers. It is the new way. And so that, that's my recommendation, is, is get some help from the best, but tell your own story about your own business. Terrific. Yeah. Ken, thank you for your time. We will have you back. Thank you. And as for the rest of you, stay tuned. We're going to be talking about the importance of headlines. Coming right up. Now I want to introduce a segment that if you don't tune in for this alone, you should consider a very long and expensive relationship with someone in the psychiatric profession. It's our how to do the what to do segment, and today we're talking headlines. You see, headlines are one of the three most important elements of any ad, online or off. Get your headline right, and you could increase response to your ad by as much as 2,100%. <laughs> Worth it, right? But for far too many marketers, headlines are a mere afterthought or are left off altogether. So here are some key headline considerations. The headline must capture attention and also convert it into interest. That's fully 50% of the work of the entire ad, and it's the first 50%, so it's critically important. Yet, headlines get more than 15 times the readership of body copy, which means most headlines are unsuccessful at getting people to pay attention to the rest of the ad. Ads with news are recalled by 22% more readers, so make sure your headline has news value whenever you can. How-to headlines attract above average engagement. You can use a snipe to call out your audience. Attention golfers or special parental advisory can be followed up by the benefit part of your headline. Now here's a surprising one. Longer headlines actually outsell shorter headlines. Yeah, believe it or not, true to this day, the one exception is subject uh, lines in emails where research shows absolutely no correlation between subject line length and open rates. Doesn't matter how long those subject lines are or how short, they get opened at about the same rate. 
Headlines that quote someone score up to 28% higher in recall tests. You should use specifics rather than generalities, like add 30 to 80 yards to your drive is better than become a better golfer. Don't use obscure headlines that don't say what the product is. These headlines don't intrigue readers, they just get ignored. Don't use double meanings, puns, or other verbal tricks. Get right to the benefits. Nobody has time to fool around these days. Don't punctuate your headline, especially with a period. Periods mean stop. On the other hand, an ellipsis means keep going, and you can test that. Test several headlines against each other in split or A-B tests to find the ones that are most effective, and never, never, never fail to use a headline. With these things in mind, here are three tricks for writing more powerful headlines. First, build a swipe file. Do you realize you get a master's degree worth of marketing education in your mailbox and your email inbox every day to say nothing of your social platforms, the radio ads you hear, the TV spots you see, and the articles you read? When you see headlines that capture your attention and convert it to interest, Collect them in a swipe file to inspire your own headline writing later on. Second, play headline scrabble. Take those great headlines and remove the words that don't apply to your product, service, or company and replace them with, with words that do. For example, nationally renowned horticulturalist reveals five new secrets for doubling the yield of your garden is a great headline including the elements of news, curiosity, and self-interest. It should be in your swipe file. But if you don't sell something to do with gardening, you can still use the headline just as it is by playing head headline scrabble. Simply replace words that don't apply to your business with words that do. So, locally renowned veterinarian reveals three key secrets for reviving your older pet's liveliness and dramatically extending its lifespan. See what I mean? Finally, take a single headline concept and write it in as many headline styles as possible. Here are six proven winners. New style headline. Well, it's the kind of thing you'd see in the National Enquirer. Or how about the how, what, why headline? These are headlines that Start with the words how, what, or why. How two headlines fall into that. The interrogative headline is basically a question. It can also start with how, what, or why, but you put it in question form rather than statement form. The command headline is where you tell people exactly what you want them to do. Never again suffer from the pain and itch of hemorrhoidal tissues. Numbered ways headlines. You've heard those before. Three key tax loopholes the IRS doesn't want you to know about. And then there's the quote, testimonial, or bogus quote. The quote is something you say as the owner of the company. For example, in my case, I might say, let me help you double your revenue this year. Or if it was a testimonial, it would come from one of your customers. One of my customers might say, Jim helped me double my revenue in less than a year. Or the bogus quote. This is something nobody ever really said, but they should have. The most famous one is, they laughed when I sat down at the piano, but then I began to play. It sold millions of dollars worth of, believe it or not, study at home, learn to play the piano courses. Once you've got a group of headlines, go out and test your options to see which headline pulls best. You'll be amazed at how you can genetically engineer your advertising for ever increasing success. Well, I'd love to hear your comments and suggestions. Leave them below, and I'll randomly select one to receive a copy of my book, How to Market Your Crap When the Economy's Still in the Toilet. Now, stick with me. I'll be right back with Kent Whipple, the $12 million plumber, who will share some of his secrets on how he built his business with radio. All right, welcome back. And look... I've, I have, as part of the Biz Kaboom Small Business Marketing Program, a commitment to actually go out, find entrepreneurs who have made it work, and bring them in and, help, and ask them to share with you their secrets for success. And such is the case with our next guest. It's Ken Whipple. He is the Chief Visionary Officer, President of uh, Whipple Service Champions. 
Now, what is a service champion? Well, it used to be a plumber. Now it's a service champion. He started out with one truck. He's grown his business to 50 trucks and $12 million a year. He does about a million dollars a month as a plumber. Hey, do you know how rare that is in that industry? He is one of the elites in the entire nation. I want you to welcome him now so he can share with us what it is he does and how he does it and the lessons you can learn. Kent, please come on in. Hey. Thanks very much. Appreciate you, uh, you. joining us today. And uh, it's an honor to have you as, as our second guest wow. on Biz Kaboom Small Business Marketing. Thanks well, I love joining. your shows. I watch your YouTube things. Yeah, I appreciate that. Learn appreciate from that. it. The reason I wanted you to come on today, Kent, was uh, in addition to the fact that you've clearly been exceptionally successful in your field, it's the way you've been successful in your field from an advertising perspective that, that, uh, that I've watched over the years, and, uh, and you've heard me say this before, and I'm not just blowing smoke because I've told you months ago that this was the case. I think your radio advertising campaign might be the best radio advertising campaign I have ever heard anywhere from anybody at any time. Wow. Uh, and you do it yourself. I as do. As opposed to hiring an agency. So let's first of all talk about your approach to marketing in general. And then I want to get into the specifics of the ad campaigns and, and radio specifically. Well, you mentioned that it's very unusual to have such a a large company, especially in the industry of home services, mm -hmm. and, and that's the case because it's very fragmented. There's a lot of one and two truck operations, a right. lot, and, and it's usually a dad and a child who's been forced to help the dad, <laughs> whether he wants to or not, right, and that right. was my case. My mm -hmm. father was a plumber, and we all, uh, I have four brothers who were all uh, plumbers at one time or mm -hmm. another, mm -hmm. and I still have two brothers that do plumbing, and and they've kept it as a one truck operation each. Right. And w the big problem is that they don't market. It's marketing is the differentiator. Marketing, as they say, or as I say, is the engine that drives every enterprise. Everything. And if you want to do it by word of mouth, which is a form of marketing, it's very ineffective. And you may be able to be busy as a one truck operation. But say you want to do 100,000 in a month. Then you should pick that number, whether it's seven or ten percent. And in our industry, it's around ten percent. If you're efficient, like we are right now, it's around seven percent. Mm -hmm. But ten percent, you're going to spend ten thousand dollars a month to generate a hundred thousand a month in revenue. Mm -hmm. And if you're not willing to spend that money, well, how much are you willing to spend? Right. Because well, that tells you what you're size. willing to make. Right. That's how much revenue you're going to produce mm -hmm. for yourself based on that. Right. And and so that's a marketing philosophy is you have to spend your way to right. success is right. really what you're saying. And we've always said that. Now, one of the things that you've talked about is the meticulous way that you track the right. results of right. that spend so that right. you're not wasting it. Can you go into that very briefly? Well, I, it's a, some wise man probably you said, 50% <laughs> of our advertising is worthless. Mm -hmm. Problem is we don't know which 50% it right. is. Right. And tracking makes a difference. If you could bring that down to 50%, then you can get your marketing down to 7% instead of 10, 15, mm. even 20. And then we've even had 25% months where we anticipated a certain amount of revenue. The revenue didn't show up and the marketing Whoa. spend was so high, we actually ended up with 25% of our monthly budget or monthly revenue went to marketing. That's a terrific reason That's to track right. so you cut out the waste. Right, and we've had over 100 phone numbers in a bank that we've used for different ads. And each, each phone call was recorded, and each call that came off of that phone number was counted to see how much response, even a phone call, even the phone ringing, even if it's someone that's trying to sell us something, how many times the phone rang on that one phone number. Now we've since then become much more efficient and found what works the best, but we micro, micro analyzed every direct mail piece, every yellow page ad, every add on the on the radio as much as we could. At one point we switched to a real easy number on the radio and that's what we're doing now. It's 444 fast. Mm -hmm. So if you want to call the Whipple Service Champions, it's 801 444 fast. We say that enough and you know the number, right? Yeah, it's 444 right. fast. And you remember the number. Say it with me. It's 444 fast. Why don't you have an ad agency do your ads for you? Well, I've I've talked with ad agencies. I've had 
uh, different people help me over the years, and I think I've created a, a kind of a personality of my ads. Mm -hmm. And it's uh, and you are the voice of the ads. I'm the voice. I write them all myself, and I, I learned something um, about. I, I don't know if it's speaking, probably in the you know the National Speakers Association. Stories are better mm -hmm. than just giving facts. So I try to put a story in every ad, and then I have and three. Let me interrupt you just a uh -huh. minute because. Folks, you got to know what these ads are like, so take a listen. I told some of you this story. One year I don't tune up my air conditioner and my house feels uncomfortable. I go to the furnace and the coil on top is covered with ice. My outside unit won't shut off. It keeps sending refrigerant to the inside coil to absorb heat. Air is supposed to be blowing by the coils to warm them. The furnace filter and coil are dirty, blocking the airflow. My electric bill goes through the roof and I almost burned out my compressor. Don't be a buffoon like I was that year. Call Whipple Service Champions for our 22 point precision tune up. On sale now for just 49 it needs to be done once a year and it lasts all year. Call 801-444-FAST. You get our red carpet rolling, clean cut, drug tested, background check technicians who won't leave a mess. I know better now and so do you. Call Whipple Service Champions for your $49 tune up. That's 801-444-FAST. For emergencies, when you call today, we come today. Whipple, they come, air condition your home. So, yeah, you've got a nice narrative there uh -huh. that goes on and an offer that's made and those right, kinds of things. So right. what are the, th those key elements that you put into every radio ad? Well, and I wouldn't say every one because on the radio stations that we play the most, they hear different, um, they hear different offers and different ads mm -hmm. so much that I don't necessarily have to have them on every one. But the three main elements that I try to put in almost every ad is a compelling offer. It's compelling. It's like it's really mm -hmm. good. It's almost like a lost leader, and and a lot of times we do lose money on those. It's time sensitive. It's it's There's now or it's it. gone. There's a sense of urgency to it, like you talk about, which I've learned from you. And then there's a compelling reason for the offer. It's well, we bought too many. We have uh, this many more, or mm -hmm. we mm -hmm. for so whatever that they can reason believe that there's right. a real reason. Why this? Why right. this thing? This offer is being made, and it has to be sincere. You have to have a real reason. And what is the real reason? Well, it's because we're trying to keep our technicians busy this time of year. Now, there's a couple of things as we wrap up that uh, that folks are going to say. Okay, one of the things they're going to say is, "Good grief, uh, you know, tra tracking a hundred different phone numbers uh, or tracking period is so because I've got my people and my people, you know, uh, people come in. We we try to get them to say, where did you hear about us or what brought you in today?' And you know, my people just won't record it. They've got all kinds of reasons why it won't work. It starts with recruiting." Hiring, training, holding people accountable. Even in the recruiting process, if you answer the telephone for me, you'll be required to find out how they heard about us and document that in the screen on the computer. And you will not be able to go to the next field unless you've put something in that blank. It's a systemized approach that produces phenomenal mm -hmm. results consistently. And, and when you talk about the idea that, uh, you know, we're going to track X number of phone numbers and, and track every single piece of marketing that we do. What I think you're really saying is there's a price that has to be paid if you're going to grow your business and grow it quickly. And attention to the details of marketing is part of that price. It could cost between 75, well, $17 is the least expensive invoice I've ever produced, $17. And it could be $750, depending on what marketing source you're using. Mm -hmm. I don't want to market for $750, $750 to generate one invoice. I want $17. Most of the time, it's around $75. The Yellow Pages got up to $275. Yeah. We're not in the Yellow Pages anymore. Ken, I appreciate you coming by. I appreciate you talking to us about not just the radio, but your approach to marketing in general. We want to have you back uh, to tell us some more because Hey, uh, my, my whole point is, if we can find people who've actually done it, they can help you do it in your quest to get more customers who will pay you more money more often, the fastest, easiest, most cost-effective ways possible. Ken, thanks again for joining me, and uh, you stay tuned. We've got more. You know, there are all kinds of gurus telling you all kinds of things you can and should do to increase your sales. And to tell you the truth, isn't that what I'm doing right now? But here's the problem. 
While all kinds of people will tell you all kinds of what to do's, almost nobody tells you the how to do it. Almost nobody tells you how you can make it all work and why it will. Almost nobody tells you the fundamental principles you need to employ in all of your marketing, regardless of the way you do it. Fact is, there are four essential marketing principles that should be the underpinning, the cornerstones of all your marketing efforts anywhere, anytime, for any business. They're the how to do it's that will determine the success of everything from your business card to a billboard, from a tweet to an infomercial, from YouTube to network television, and from a website to a superstore. You'll discover these four essential marketing principles in my audio program called, <laughs> strangely enough, the four essential marketing secrets that guarantee you'll never worry about lousy sales again. I want you to have this audio program, which is normally, by the way, $77 in CD form, $57 delivered digitally, but I want you to have it for just $37 as a special welcome to the BizKaboom Small Business Marketing Program. And I personally guarantee you'll be happy with it, or I'll refund the money and you won't even have to return the program. Just go to the Four Essentials URL below to place your order and use the promo code BOOM1 to get the special deal. Or go to bizkaboom.com and click on the YouTube special to get the same deal. Remember, you won't pay $77 or even $57. You'll get the entire Four Essential Marketing Secrets program for just $37. And I don't just promise you'll like it, I guarantee it, or your money back. Well, you would have expected it to be Amazon or Google or maybe even Alibaba, but nobody saw this coming. Well, those big cheese companies are out there trying to figure out how to deliver products by drone. A little mouse in Frankfurt, Illinois has stolen their cheese. He's actually done it. Tony Dortenzio is the owner of Distinctive Gold Jewelry, and he delivered an anniversary gift from his jewelry store to a customer's home using a manually controlled drone, a little different from the GPS controlled ones. Nevertheless, it got done. Tony stores in a town with a population of just 15,000, but that's not stopping him from being cutting edge. He contracted with David Ho of Aerial Photo of Illinois to make the drop. A lot of logistics went into being able to bring off the stunt, but the biggest deal was finding the right customer in the right location for the right occasion at the right time. That customer came in the form of a customer whose 40th wedding anniversary came last September. Distance from the store was about one and a half miles and took seven minutes from the door of the store to the door of the customer. Tony sent a message to the customer as the drain took off so the customer could have his wife out the door ready to get the full effect. And as you can see, they teased her a bit as they brought it down. Tony says she was totally blown away to be part of such an incredible and unforgettable 40th anniversary gift and the first, or at least one of the first, genuine drone product deliveries in the world. So far, that's the only drone delivery Tony has done, but he and David are both open to more for the right occasions. Well, congratulations to Tony for first recognizing an opportunity and second, acting upon it. Of course, you can imagine that the delivery of a single product by drone hasn't had that big of an impact on Tony's business, but the publicity it's generated, including what you're watching right now, certainly has, and that makes this idea a brilliant marketing move. You should be so innovative and I'll be back to wrap things up in just a minute. Well, I hope you enjoyed this inaugural episode of Biz Kaboom Small Business Marketing. Please subscribe to the channel, get your friends to do the same with your likes and shares, and we definitely want to hear your suggestions, content requests, and comments on the program, so leave them below. Then join us again next week when we'll have Andrew Locke, popular host of Help My Business on YouTube, an important story on how to survive and thrive in what I'm calling the new terror economy. Not a joking matter, but important. And Jason Alba, founder of the career management site jibberjobber.com. All that and more, and another adventure in how to get more customers who will pay you more money more often, the fastest, easiest, most cost-effective ways possible. See you next time.